Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 14. So this time we're going to carry on with our health and our AI. In other words, when the zombie attacks us, we actually lose the health which we've already scripted but something actually happens this time. So we're going to look at hurt sounds as well, so like an ow or ooh when we get hit. Um, we'll also look at uh, an ammo object that we can put in and we'll also look at new scenes so we'll need new scenes i.e for when we die so what i want to talk about first is i know a lot of you guys especially new people to the series who um not you guys who've been following it since the beginning the zombie itself has changed in the asset store and i do know that's maybe a little bit of a problem and struggling to you know get the animations working there is a workaround for it i have posted a video recently um i will link it in the comments below i will pin it to the top so if you're struggling with your zombie getting its animations at this point please take a look at that video it will help you a million so let's get to work shall we now our health script is this global health and generally it's nothing too complex. It, it was just a case of taking health off ourselves. And we start with, I think, how much health? 20? And every time we get hit, the zombie is taking about five off us, I think. So four hits and we would be dead. So in this episode, we're going to add in some sound effects and actually make that number worth something. So in our effects folder, I'm going to bring in these three audio clips and you can get them on the website for free as always head on over there downloads and assets and let's add these sounds to our fps controller so in effects right click create empty and let's add hurt one to this object rename it to hurt zero one and turn off play on away let's duplicate twice and add the other two just make sure we uh, rename two and three and each of them are unticked play on away so what we're going to do is we're going to randomize which one of those is played whenever the zombie hits us so for that we'll need to go into if i can remember zombie ai so in this script, we're going to add in those three variables as well as an extra one, which will determine which one is going to play. So public audio source, and we'll call it hurt sound one, semicolon. And I'm going to copy and paste twice and just do hurt sound two and hurt sound three and finally public int and we'll call this hurt gen so we'll generate a number and what will happen is in this enumerator inflict damage right down here after we've done is attacking is true and after we've waited the instant we lose the health which is when the zombie actually attacks us that is when we need to play a sound so after that we go hurt gen equals random dot range and we have three different types but we're going to add one extra because i can't remember if i said it in this series whenever you deal with random dot range you always have a problem of it never generates the maximum it's just one of those little quirks it's not specifically a bug but it's existed for as long as i can remember and i've been using unity uh, at this point six years so minimum one and maximum four close bracket semicolon but at this point we need to do an if statement so if hurt gen equals and that's a double equals one then we do the following hurt sound one dot play open close bracket semicolon and the same applies for the others so we can copy that if statement change it to two change it to two again and change it to three and three again and save that script so what will happen here is every time the zombie attacks us and actually makes contact with us after this point and we take the health off our character will make a sound go ah uh, or whatever those three sounds are so just for the record as well those hurt sounds are something i've recorded it's my voice so we'll soon see 
So now let's head back into Unity. Let's head to our zombie right here and let's add those audio clips. So hurt one, hurt two, and number three. And let's save our scene. So it's pretty easy to piece all that together. And the general thing about it is that, that kind of script could be used elsewhere. It could be used on any enemy. So we'll more than likely do it with the other enemies that we've got coming up later in the series. So let's now work on our death. So we're going to build a couple of things and then we'll test everything we've done all in one go. And we'll need to create a new scene. So let's go to File and New Scene. Now I'm not going to make this too fancy, but I'm just going to call this the Game Over Scene. So if we File and Save Scene As, let's call it Game Over. And the way this is going to work is we're going to have to reference this particular scene from our other scene. And I'll explain what I mean by that. If we go to File and Build Settings, we actually need to place our scenes within this menu here. Now, ideally, I would like the first scene to be something like a splash screen, the second screen to be something like a menu, uh, third screen to be the introduction. So we are going to have to jiggle scenes around a little bit later on in the series. But for now, we're OK as we are. So let's set up this game over screen first. And all I'm going to do is just add in a raw image and stretch it all the way. Zero out the position like so, and just turn it black. And to add to this, I am just going to place some text in the center of the screen, fairly big. So let's say 60. Let's resize. And it just says game over. I'll change it to red, I think, so we can see it. Uh, let me just change this so we can see there we go and i'm going to have it center and center and let's save that scene so let's head back to our main game scene right here and then go to file build settings and add open scenes that will add in our main scene which is now scene zero so we have to remember that this one should be scene one so build settings we need to remember number one. So what we need to do is in our global health script, we need to add into our namespace at the top, like we have done previously with uh, the UI elements that we have, we're going to have using unity engine dot scene management. And what this will allow us to do is if our health is for example zero less than zero we'll be able to use the scene management function to send ourselves to a different scene so after this section here where we have internal health is equal to current health we'll need to go if and in brackets current health is less than or equal to zero then scene manager dot load scene and in brackets one and semicolon so essentially our global health will send ourselves to the game over screen if the zombie attacks us too many times and we lose too much health so let's give this a test so let's press play and all this should function quite nicely now and i do know that in at least in my project there are a couple of bugs um, that is going to be something we'll address next episode. I think this is one of the bugs here. It repeats it, but we can sort that out quite easily. So let's pick up our gun. And let's have our zombie attack us. <clears throat> and there we go. Game over. So I think it needs a little bit of playing around because as it stands right now, with the zombie itself the way it's um, attacking us doesn't quite seem to fit so we may need to jiggle around the zombie ai so i'm trying to think what the best way of doing this is what if we take 
this generation here and place it after the is attacking. And let's try this out. Hopefully we uh, have a little bit of fun here and it actually works perfectly. So I'm pretty sure I've said it before guys and I'll probably say it again. Game development is all about testing and getting things just right because you'll be testing things over and over and over, just trying to get them right. <clears throat> so, I have noticed that he seems to lag a little bit when he's attacking us, so we may need to delay ourselves. I think this down here could do with an extra delay, so let's change that to 0 0.9, save, and play. So at this point, I think it's all about you guys doing your timing correctly here, and you shouldn't really have a problem. So, this is the last time I'm going to test this, and hopefully he should work nicely. Fingers crossed. Go on, zombie, play nicely. <gasps> <clears throat> yeah, so, ha! Huh, it's almost as we would expect. So, let's add in the final thing of this tutorial. So I'm going to click on my M9 here to zoom in. And let's have an ammo box just here in the corner. And it's going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to drag and drop this ammo box straight in. And when I bring this into the scene, it's going to be quite large, but we can just change the size. 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, and it fits nicely in the scene. Now, at this point, we're going to leave this tutorial here, and next time is going to be all about getting things sorted. So, next time we're going to fix a couple of bugs and glitches, maybe try and get the timing on the zombie a little bit better. I'd like to add in some maybe red flashes when we get hit, so, you know, there's a little bit of visual there. Uh, I know there's a bit of a glitch going on with this gun here, picking it up, so we'll get that sorted. Uh, I believe as well the zombie doesn't quite die as he should when we shoot him so fingers crossed we're going to get that sorted and i know there's a glitch here where it triggers twice so we'll get that sorted in the next episode as well and we'll also look at uh, some what should we look at let's look at picking up this game object here which is our ammo box and we'll also look at the ammo mechanic and some ui on screen so guys until that next episode Thank you very much for watching.